Today, we're gonna to continue on the roll cage design and work on the diagonal bar. So I'm gonna show you how to notch the tubes without a tube notcher and also get into some of the welding. Here's a practice piece. Garage time. Welcome back. Okay, the design considerations for the diagonal bar are pretty straightforward. It's really just one continuous tube from the driver's head, which is about where this bend is, this corner, all the way down to the base plate. So if it attaches to the base plate, that's okay, but it can be no more than 100 millimeters above the base plate where it attaches here at the lower corner. That gives it the most strength as it's attached close to the chassis of the car. The bar should be one continuous piece and um, same material as the main hoop design. Also, the back stays have to connect to the diagonal bar no more than 100 millimeters from the joint. So there should not be a large offset between the back stay, which goes back to the engine bay, and the diagonal bar. So I've decided my diagonal bar will be really close to my head, and then the back stay will be on, on top of that same joint. So that's a tube notching exercise we'll get to soon. Okay, now I'm ready to install the diagonal bar in the main hoop, but if you remember from last week, the main hoop has a little bit of a offset where it attaches to the car on the base plate. So I needed to stretch one of the legs out a little bit and I'm gonna use the diagonal bar to help me with that. So I'm gonna take it out, take some measurements, and know exactly how far I need to stretch this leg on the passenger side so it hits right where I want it to on the car. Here's a front view of the roll cage. This bar here needs to move this way about an inch. Okay, this bar is too big to fit on my welding table and it is a labor of love, but I don't love working on the floor, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, these diagonals are about a half of an inch off, meaning this side uh, here is just bent too far in. So I need to relax this bend and relax this bend just a little bit. Okay, so the idea of correcting this angle problem is to use the diagonal bar to help spread out the base of this main hoop. So I've, um, I've done some practicing on the tube notching technique. So this was a practice piece. I, uh, I figured out the method. I'm gonna link um, uh, in the description a little bit more detail on how this method works. It's, uh, it's on YouTube, it's a great uh, tutorial. But essentially it's basically marking two cut lines and then finessing it by hand. You know, I don't have a tube notcher, but it is possible and actually it works out quite well to get this uh, fish mouth shape on the tubing so that there's no gaps when you go to weld it. The idea is to mark this line parallel to the tube you want to mate it to, and then mark a line perpendicular to this one. So this is perpendicular to this one. And then you extend one third of the tubing diameter. So this is inch and a half tubing. So one third is half an inch. This is about a half an inch up. And then you just connect the, uh, the two endpoints. So from here to here, it's a little hard to draw on a round tube, but you essentially just look from straight down and you try to create the best line you can and then take it to the saw and cut along these two lines. I also put this line here on the center line of the tube so when I put this in the saw, I have this line pointing straight up. That means it doesn't rotate in the saw and when I'm cutting through the entire tube, the back side will be just as good as the front side. Okay, I've cut across those two hand-drawn lines. There was one cut here and then one cut here. So here's a piece of tube, same diameter, and you can see without doing any work, the, um, the gaps are, are pretty good. 
So especially with a MIG welder, you could just weld this as is. I'm going to finesse it a little bit on the inside. Okay, I got this joint all tuned up and ready to tack weld, but before I do, you know, these tubes are overlapping here. So I'm gonna um, trim this side and uh, doctor up this joint so that it's all ready to weld. And I'm gonna make this side a little extra long because if you remember, I'm gonna be stretching this out about an inch or so. Okay, this bar fits pretty well. Um, it's a little bit too long right here. Um, this is the long side of the bevel, but it's, it's gonna interfere with the base plate right here. So I'm gonna put some tacks in on this side and then just muscle this tube back kind of into shape. So I'm gonna clean off my bench and uh, do some more practice welding too. Let me show you the piece I did already. I ran a couple beads along here. I went around doing some uh, the fillet welds here. It did penetrate to the inside of the tube. I'm gonna cut this in half and show you how much uh, penetration there is. So here's that section that was uh, joined together on an angle. I ran at about 90 amps, and uh, you can see these welds are completely connected all the way through. I think TIG welding is preferred on roll cages. It's just a you know, more controllable, good penetration, doesn't create a lot of buildup, easy to inspect. Um, I think that's what I'm gonna do versus the MIG welding. I'm using acetone to, uh, and, a, and a scotch Brite pad to really clean these tubes, both inside and out, so that it doesn't contaminate the weld. Okay, I've just welded a short section here so that I can work on the other end. I wanna get the other end in the right position with this uh, passenger side hoop kind of bulged out a little bit. So I'm gonna go back down to the floor and move this over and tack that end in, and then I'll come back and uh, you know finish all the welds here. Here's another little sample piece that I did just uh, for practice for today. This contraption is helping me get this um, right side tube back in position. So on this side, I marked on my floor with Sharpie this um, green line. So this is where it was before. And then on this side, these lines are pretty faint, but this is the, this is the original line where it was. And this is the new, new version right here. This line right here is offset by about an inch. And then this tube here can just pull with my hand, I can just pull it tighter. And I put this big, this is a very heavy duty, this is quarter inch wall thickness square tubing here on the top. And I put that here because I don't wanna bend this portion of the tube. I'm really just trying to unwind uh, this bend right here and perhaps this bend. So 
This is trying to keep this um, kind of flat. I don't want to bend that in the reverse way. And then over here, there's no forces on this section right here. Okay, I wanted to show you guys this contraption because this was really getting uh, out of control. So my intent was just to use motorcycle straps and pull this thing over. But my box of motorcycle straps is in another car and I just don't have access to it. And I could buy some, but I, I have these heavy duty things. This hydraulic ram is kind of nice. It's attached to the uh, main hoop and it's pulling it where I want it to be. And it, it's, uh, it's very finesse. I mean, it doesn't have any uh, ratchet detents, so I can put it right where I want it. And then this um, diagonal tube has this string wrapped around it. And then that's attached to this, which is this, uh, you know, it's like a two ton come along puller thing. And that's way overkill, but uh, to prevent me from going to the store, that's what I'm using to keep this joint tight. All right, all those contraptions are taken off and I hope I didn't mislead anyone. Um, there's not a lot of tension in these tubes. I mean, all these tubes, the way they were, I could move them by hand. Uh, all those heavy duty tools, which are now uh, released, they were just there to kind of help hold it for me. I just don't want anyone to think that these tubes are under severe tension because they're, they're basically not. I'm gonna put this in the car just to get an idea how it falls on the base. Really quick, you can now tell that this is centered on the landing right there. And then on this side, it remains uh, the same. So it's right there in the middle of the landing with, uh, with no extra pressure on it. Also, you note that the uh, diagonal bar attaches pretty low towards the mount. Um, it's 100 millimeters max, and that is probably about uh, 20 millimeters, maybe maybe 30 if you measure on the other side. Let's get welding. Let's go. I just finished up all the welding on this tube. It's had some time to cool down. You can see here, this is the top half. The welds are uh, okay. You know, I'm not gonna win any sort of beauty contests with these welds, but it's, uh, it's okay. It's structurally, I think it's fine. Like I showed you on the sample piece, I cut it and the penetration was all okay. Here is this lower section. Once again, this is uh, less than 100 millimeters. The weld coming around. It's not too bad. The one thing I forgot to do was to vent this tube. So this tube here is vented through this hole right here. But as you get towards the end of the weld, I think it was on this one, there's kind of a big kind of blob right here. And that's because all the smoke and the air pressure of the heated tube has to go somewhere. And so it tries to blow it out the last portion of the weld that you're trying to complete. That is difficult because it ruins the shielding gas and it just makes it really tough. So I had to let it cool down um, all the way down and then go ahead and zip up the last little bit. So that's why there's a lot of start and stop a little bit messy right here on the end. So if I had thought about that, actually I did think about it, but because I was so busy clamping this corner um, and getting the fit correct and getting this you know, position where I wanted it, I forgot to drill. I could have just drilled this tube right here. So all the air pressure could have vented through this hole and then out this vent here. So that's something to remember when I put the base plates on, I will drill a hole somewhere in the main hoop I think the requirements require a hole for visual inspection of the material thickness anyways, but before I close up these ends, I do wanna have a vent. It's just good practice for welding. So next up is the, uh, the harness bar is gonna go roughly from this bend across to the other side. Now that height is important relative to the seats. So I need to figure out the actual height that I can get my seats down to so I know where to place the harness bar. The harness bar and the angle between the openings and the seats is very important so it doesn't pull down on your shoulders too far if you do um, have to use them. Also, I'm gonna work on the base plates. The base plates just spread the load out from this tube onto the chassis so it doesn't just puncture a hole through the bottom of the car if it does roll over. It's gotta spread the load over a much bigger area.
Okay, I'm not sure if this plate is big enough, um, so I'm just gonna estimate the area. This is sort of the shape of a parallelogram, and I think the area of a parallelogram is the, uh, the base times the height. So the height of this thing on this, this is the shorter side, is eight. So it's eight centimeters by its length. 116.6 and it's supposed to be 120. So I just make it a little bit longer, I guess. Uh, that was a pretty good guess. Don't forget to check out augaragetime.com. We have a tab there for merchandise. You can order the t-shirts, the coffee mugs, the stickers on Teespring if you wanna support Garage Time. And also please check out our Patreon page. I'm kind of restructuring that page. You know, we talked about doing some live stream kind of, you know, member only sort of consultation stuff on Sundays. Doesn't look like that panned out very well. So I'm just going to change it up a little bit. Um, we have some free gift uh, ideas there. Please check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, I've picked out some steel for this base plate and this is eighth inch thick. This is the required thickness for all the standards, uh, for weld-in cages at least. And I want to trace this on the steel and cut it out with my plasma cutter. But I can't do it right now. It's getting a little late. I don't want the air compressor and the plasma cutter and all the grinding and cutting sounds to uh, disturb my neighbors. I know I'm uh, trying to stay on their good side. This project is really stretching it. Um, so progress is progress. You know, it doesn't look like I got much done, but I got the main hoop to fit the car better, which is key and I got the uh, tubes notched and welded in for the diagonal bar and the base plates planned out. I am gonna do a little bit more research on the harness bar before I notch those tubes. So I'll take the progress um, as little as it is. Progress is progress. I did do a little bit to the car. Um, I, I put some epoxy primer in that rolled fender edge that was left as bare steel and I did a little bit of touch up uh, primer in the back where I did some um, lead work on the license plate panel or the uh, reflector panel. So I did get a little bit more done on that. Hope to do some more uh, body work all over the weekend and you're not missing much. Uh, those things are kind of done off camera just because it's really repetitive. So wish me luck. I will see you next week. Take care.